Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Rhonda. We want to talk with you today about ways that you can synergize with your spouse. So we want to have positive ways of looking at what's happening between us and our spouse. So let's talk about some of those. So we're going to look at some material from Stephen Covey in his book, mm -hmm. uh, The Third Alternative, Solving Life's Most Difficult Problems. He gives in there an order in four ways that a person is going to reach synergy. And so the uh, first one we're going to look at is I see myself. So we have to be aware of our own motives and intentions to make sure they're pure, right? If my motives, if, if I am a controlling person, if, if it's all about me and what I want, and I'm not focused on pleasing and serving my spouse, my motives and intentions are off from the beginning. You know, so many times, you know, in, the, in our marriage, we do have different perspectives, and we want to learn how to make those perspectives blend into our perspective, not just his perspective or her perspective, right. but it's our perspective. And, oh. and a lot of times, we're trying to change our spouse, yeah. and we're not even looking at ourselves. Yeah. And that's where it should start. Because if I'm promoting the problem, if my responses support that cycle that's taken us down, if I can break the cycle, I can turn things in a different direction. Yeah. So when we're talking about the, our difference, our different ways of seeing perspectives, we have to disconnect ourselves and our identity from our thought or our idea so that we aren't found uh, uh, defending my perspective as if that perspective is me. And so it's us talking about this issue that's out here, not me and this issue against you. Right. You know, but I need to see that it's that we are discussing this topic. We're not trying. It's not about me trying to get Sean to do what I want. It's about me and Sean laying out the he and she on the table and saying, okay, what does we look like? Because in the marriage. <clears throat> It's not about me living like I would if I were single or Sean living like he would if he were single. It's about us living like we would because of each other, yeah. because we have each other in the picture and we're blending. Yeah. So, you know, we have to, in, in seeing this, we have to recognize our spouse is free to decide yeah. how they want to live, how, how they want to choose to respond to what I ask. We've got to be able to accept the difference that our spouse represents and what they bring to the table is a contribution, not something that we need to attack. And so, you know, we don't have to look, we don't want to look at ourselves as I have all the answers mm -hmm. and I'm sharing the answers with you, but that together we are looking for the answer or the solution to right. what's going on. Right. All right, the next area we want to look at is I see you. And this is where I'm really accepting and highly valuing what my spouse represents and what the perspective that they have. And so because we are seeing our spouse in such a, with such high regard, we are not seeing our spouse as a thing, but as a person with thoughts, feelings, and ideas that I should care about. You know, our spouse has uh, valid thoughts and feelings. We need to validate them and not discount them. Yeah. So we want to see what, what does my spouse bring to the table? Because a lot of times when, when we're talking about issues where everybody's talking and nobody's listening, so if we can play the role of active listener, tell me more. Yeah. Help me understand what you're seeing. So why is it you feel that way? How does that make you feel? And if we did what you're suggesting, how, what would that say to you? That's really exploring and having a curiosity mm -hmm. about what your spouse is presenting instead of being so quick to push it away and say, no, I don't agree with that. And so seeing myself, I'm, I'm this individual and these are my motives and intentions as I engage with my spouse. This is who you are. I value you and who you are in this marriage that this is a we thing and not a me thing. Yeah. And then I seek you out, and what does that mean? Yeah. You know, sometimes we are found in our relationship worshiping an image of ourselves. And if our spouse doesn't look like us and act like us, we've, we're trying to change them to be more like me. And so we're requiring of another person sameness mm -hmm. instead of appreciating and valuing difference. He yeah. and she are supposed to be different. That's the whole idea. And he or she are both godly. 
and both valuable. You know, sameness is not oneness and uniformity is not unity. We need to look to find unity and in that unity it is discovering the difference that you, you represent. The next area is I seek you out and this is where we're really empathizing with our spouse and really having a curiosity and understand, trying to understand what they are saying. Yeah, because we can't really connect and find union if we don't first understand what does it feel like to be you. And if we don't take the time to really hear the heart of the spouse, because union between a husband and wife is on a heart level. You know, we want to take the time to really explore and seek out what our spouse is really trying to say. And so are we being intentional in everything that we're deciding um, in the marriage? Or am I saying it really matters to me, not just what I think and feel and, and being heard myself, but also, does my spouse feel heard? Does my spouse feel equally valued by me? Does my spouse feel that I consider everything he's bringing to the table? Or does he feel that, you know what, I kind of come across like my way is the most important and I'm the mm. smartest one here. That wouldn't be my intention, but how am I coming across? You know, sometimes we just need to ask questions mm. and say, how do you yeah. feel like I'm coming across to you? So the next area we want to look at is lastly, I synergize with you. So after we have done these first three areas, we mm -hmm. next can look for how do we really blend these two perspectives. And it's about laying he and she on the table and being able to look at it. Have you fully shared with me mm -hmm. what you see about this? Have I fully shared with you? Sometimes, you know, the less verbal spouse might defer to the more verbal spouse and that's not a good idea yeah. we want to be assertive enough to say well you know I have some thoughts about that too would it be okay if I share it yeah I love what Jesus said mm -hmm. about marriage he said they two shall be one so when two become one that doesn't mean that he ceases to exist or that she ceases to exist and there's only one left it's really a true blending of he plus she equaling yeah. we and so as we have the he and she on the table, we're examining it prayerfully. How does this blend? What is the we to be found here? Yeah. Now that I've laid me on the table and my spouse has laid himself on the table, what do we have here? And sometimes we need to ask ourselves, well, what's the minimum you would be okay with? Yeah. Because sometimes we need to shrink it way back and think, okay, I would be happy if this was in the picture and this was not in the picture. Right. And sometimes we have to do that yeah. to find something that we could both be good with. Right. And that just takes some patience. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we can be so quick to want to race to the conclusion and to wrap everything up and move on that we don't really take time to ponder and look at what we have that each of us is presenting and to really see how do these puzzle yeah. pieces go together. And so the goal is to find something that's uniquely us. Yeah. Because we're special. Because God put this particular he with this particular she for a purpose and a reason. And what is that? And how can we unite to find that and do that? I think that's what really makes our <clears throat> marriage exciting is when we find where we join together over something that it looked like were differing viewpoints before.